Okay, and right now you should also see my screen, right? Yes. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, amazing. <laughs> okay, then. Hi, everyone, and one welcome from my side. Nice picture on the screen, right? At least also for November, end of November almost. So some of you also should know and remember this kind of picture because we have started our last year's presentation at the Capella Days with this kind of picture. And if you remember last year, I have asked myself how model-based systems engineering can help me by packing my suitcase for my next vacation in the winter time. And luckily, the last time, my colleague and also my travel friend, Chantal, she helped me to solve this kind of problem. So we have presented our solution, how to pack our suitcase right based on model-based systems engineering. This year, I have asked myself if we can also use model-based systems engineering to expand this approach for our manufacturing area, so not only for the design area. And basically, Chantal asked herself the same question a few years ago by starting to think about her PhD thesis. And therefore, I'm happy that we're back again today and to talk about the topic of how to think outside the box. So how to expand model-based systems engineering into model-based production engineering with the target to realize a Lego manufacturing system. And what you're going to see today is no magic, it's reality based on the PhD thesis from my colleague Chantal. So also warm welcome, Chantal. Chantal has been a researcher for five years at the University of Kaiserslautern from 2013 to 2019. And there she worked together with other researchers and also industry representatives um, for the project so-called Mac Pro. And these people, they targeted to develop an integrated design process for cyber physical product system together with cyber physical manufacturing system. And the necessary interdisciplinary collaboration for this process should then be supported by the usage of MBSE to reach a common understanding and a central system model. Some of this project results were the starting point for her PhD thesis from which we will hear today about the model-based production engineering concept with the target, again, to realize a manufacturing system. And right now, I hope you're curious. And before we start right now to jump into our presentation, we would like to ask you, first of all, to take your, to take your, oops, let me, to take your mobile, directly and screen shortly the QR code and jump into two short um, questions from our side. Or in case you do not have like a mobile which is working and with the camera code, then you can also jump directly on menti.com and enter the code 1443-9492. So go ahead. And then we are just having one or two questions. The first question would be if you ever heard of model-based production engineering or if this would be the first time. And let's see what are the results. So we have right now 15, 16, 17. Great. Again, in case in case you do not see no longer the QR code, you can also use on the top the menti.com and use the code instead to jump into this kind of question. Okay, Chantal, I would say currently there are most of the people they haven't heard so far about the concept of model-based production engineering. 80%, 70-80%. Some of our audience has already heard about it. 51. Let's see who else is joining. Okay. But that's a good starting point. So that means that we have a good content for you and new content also for you. Um, and we hope you are really curious. But we have also a second question for you. In uh, next or beside to the question of if you have uh, ever heard of the model-based production engineering approach, we also would like to know, based on your experience, how product design and manufacturing people collaborate with each other. What we do see, you have already you already jumped into the second question. That's great. So what we do see, based on your experience from your work, also from your from your customers, for example, your experience is that the product design and the manufacturing people they work in silos, right? 
So I think this is the, the most common part currently. Okay, great. I think this is a this is a good starting point to start our presentation. And therefore, I would like to come back right now up to our presentation. And I would like to start with you to play a short mind game because we are right now at the end of the of the day for most of us. And therefore, we would like to start a bit like playing around. So this is a mirror. A Mira, she is our head of factory planning. And together with her two teams for the product design and the manufacturing planning, they want to build a Lego Mindstorm factory for toy cars. So that means the project starts directly, they start to work, and everyone jumps into their own work. But after some time, Amira identifies that her manufacturing planning team and her product design team, they don't collaborate with each other because they work in silos. That's what you have also figured out already. And they speak different languages. And therefore, the progress is too slow. And also the results, they are not at all synchronized. We've already heard that sounds familiar to you. So let's imagine you would be Amira. And you want to bring your experts into one interdisciplinary team where everyone is collaboratively working together already in the early stage of the engineering cycle. And imagine they also start to speak the same language. Helpless, you would speed up your engineering process. And furthermore, you would also reach a fully synchronized global solution for your manufacturing. I hope it doesn't sound like a Christmas wish because Chantal and me, we have right now this kind of Christmas present for you. So Chantal, right now we're coming to you. How we can accomplish this? Okay, a warm hello to everyone um, of you also from my side. And I am very happy to speak to you today about what uh, Susan has already introduced. And to your question, Susan, in the world of mechatronic design with the MBSE, we already know an established method to bring together experts from different domains based on a common language. The interesting question now is to see if this could also help our experts from design and manufacturing to work together more closely. And to answer this, we must, of course, first build the um, methodolo methodological bridge and introduce the so-called model-based production engineering. Because even if factories and products are definitively both systems with a multitude of dependencies, they also have their special content related and methodical necessities in their individual development processes. Likewise, we will have to pay special attention to their already mentioned dependencies. And since we all already know what MBSE is, let's directly start in why you should also think about MBP. Then let's start. Who has already come in contact with the two disciplines of product development and manufacturing system planning? I assume at least the one who answered these questions with a yes will already agree with the following. These two are two successive phases of the product engineering cycle. They also are two disciplines that actually have highly interdependent tasks, but are often still subject to a almost stringent division of labor. And their methods of work are described by individual process models that only take their specific tasks into account. And therefore, collaboration, if at all, will only occur in late phases of the product development cycle. But Chantal, out of this, a number of problems arises from this lack of integration, right? So first of all, the overall concept of the product is already done in the early phase of the development process without considering any kind of manufacturing requirements. Then dependencies between the product design and the product ability are not at all taken into account. This leads to, yeah, to longer development times and, higher, and also higher production costs. And the characteristics of the manufacturing system cannot be systematically linked to the requirements and product characteristics. So, and therefore, there is no systematic method for tracking dependencies and creating traceabilities. 
So how we can handle this, Chantal? We would handle this with our solution of the method of model-based production engineering. And obviously, model-based production engineering is somehow derived from the MBSE because it is also an interdisciplinary system development approach based on system thinking, but it focuses on the conceptual planning of manufacturing systems in real close collaboration with product development. The result is that the future multi-domain system architecture will then not only include aspects of the product, but also of its manufacturing. And it also means that our system boundary must include the product as well as the manufacturing system. Linking our model elements of product and manufacturing along their development processes will then lead to that we can reveal, for example, causal relationships for decisions uh, and for decision chains that will lately, later contribute um, to the optimization of the overall system. But what does this mean, Chantal? Yeah, that means that it is not enough to develop only our products on the basis of models. The associated manufacturing processes and the, the factory design connected to this must also be described in models as early as possible if we really want to realize a digital threat. Okay, Chantal, but from a the theoretical perspective, how is then right now the manufacturing system structured? Yeah, if you look at the system theory, that's quite easy. Of course, we also have a system boundary with our manufacturing system. For example, it could include a complete production site or even a distributed production network. But for the illustration here, however, we have limited our system boundary to a single factory building to reduce the complexity of the image. Our production factory here includes different production areas, which are represented mainly by different production lines, for example, as well as a few secondary areas. And within these production lines, we can assume that we will find different subsystems in the form of stations, which can be organized according to different so-called production principles. These production principles will emerge later from the logical system synthesis during the model-based production system planning process. And of course, the systemic or hierarchical decomposition is not finished at this point. In the classical way of looking at the manufacturing system, one would at least still decompose the stations into machines that are connected by processes. And in some cases, these may then even be further decomposed into individual machine components. But all the systems, subsystems and components within the system boundary of our manufacturing system have in common, though, is that they require iterative interlocking planning or development processes, which are represented in this image by the nested V models. OK, I see. So that means uh, it's, a fact, it's a manufacturing system can also be decomposed hierarchically and also systematically into subsystems and elements in order to be able to manage the full complexity of the overall model-based development process. So a bit like, like a product. But Chantal, how does this help Amira, our head of factory planning, in the application of model-based production engineering? Yeah, if you want to do MBPE or if Amira wants to do MBPE, we will need a similar metho methodical approach like, for example, Acadia for MBSE and also a modeling language and a tool. Sounds quite familiar. And this approach must also be able to cope with this hierarchic and systemic decomposition we have seen on the slide before. So while being a researcher, I have developed the first known methodical approach for MBPE, which consists of three essential components. The first one is my integrated process model for product development and manufacturing system planning throughout the product development process, which I call the macro cycle for the overall engineering cycle. The second one 
is the systematic methodology for MBPE for tailoring this macro cycle into iterative microcycles to handle complexity and system of system decomposition as we have seen it some minutes before. And the third part of my approach is the object-oriented modeling approach, which aims at providing a common language for design and manufacturing experts and models by the means of a unified terminology. Okay, I don't know how our, our audience is feeling, but at least me, I'm curious right now. So what is behind these three components, Chantal? Yeah, sure, Susan. That slide, what you have uh, opened up right now, shows this integrated process model in more detail. And it means that we see the target state of an integrated system development process with both MBSE and MBPE. This integrated process begins with a joint kickoff by all experts from product and manufacturing design, in which they together define their overall system with its system boundary. And this overall system can either consist at least of one product to be developed and one manufacturing system to be planned. Or for example, in case of a brownfield planning where something is already there, this can also be an existing manufacturing system which should be enhanced based on a new product, for example, or a new product line. Okay, that sounds familiar to me. So as part of the model-based development process of both systems, their interfaces are first considered and causal relationships and interactions are described and afterwards the systems will be decomposed into subsystems and elements, right? Correct. And also the procedure has a strongly iterative and agile character, also leading to a continuous improvement of the system design during the iterations. Okay, but let's be a bit more concrete, please. How does the methodology looks like? Yeah, my MBPE method is like many other MBSE methods, analogously defined by four system design layers. The first one is called the context and requirements level, and it defines the manufacturing object of interest specific to each of our microcycle iterations. Information about this uh, manufacturing object of interest is then gathered, especially um, dependencies to its product design and tasks and requirements for subsequent levels are then defined. After that, we have the second level, the technique and material flow level, which starts with the synthesis of solution neutral manufacturing functions. They are implemented by production methods and executed in processes. For this purpose, manufacturing resources are used, which are linked by material flows and thus describe so-called value streams. If we finish this second level, we come to the dimensioning and structure level, the third one. It helps to dimension the defined resources. It designs the production planning and control system. It arranges the resources in so-called ideal layouts, and it makes a pre-selection of the alter elaborated alternatives for these ideal layouts. And if we finish this level, we have the last, the fourth one, the technical solution level, which transforms our pre-selected ideal layouts in alternative real layouts. It evaluates them and selects between these different alternatives. And in addition, it provides the interface to the so-called expert design and future microcycle iterations. Therefore, Subsystems of our object of interest are identified here, which will need their own and separate microcycle iteration. And if the model is detailed enough, um, the derived tasks are specified for the subsequent expert design. Okay, this approach is yeah quite understandable for me. And this answers also the question how this system engineering and the design looks like. But what's about the modeling approach? Yeah, Susan, that's now the third part of my MBPE method. My modeling approach provides, as explained before, a conceptually aligned language for design and manufacturing experts to create their integrated models. And here, initially, I created a UML profile. 
it represents all important model artifacts that are necessary for the integrated MBSE and MBPE. Some examples of these stereotypes are also shown on this slide. The profile distinguishes between stereotypes for elements of the production system, for elements of the product, and for shared elements, such as, for example, the requirement. And also, in order to represent causal chains, stereotypes are additionally defined for relations. And these stereotypes for relations serve to set different model elements, um, to set these different model elements in dependence to each other in a semantically organized way. Accordingly, the stereotypes for relations are defined in such a way that a continuous linkage of the elements according to their interrelationships is guaranteed during the entire system development cycle in the sense of traceability. Mm -hmm. So in summary, your UML stereotype describes a common conceptual world and characterizes causal changes between system elements and decisions. But let's, let me ask you one Another question. Actually, I mean, SysML is the standard modeling language in MBSE worldwide. Why we should use now a UML2 profile to realize model-based production engineering? Susan, this is an absolutely legitimate question. I used UML because during our research, we found that SysML, which is also based on the UML language, is particularly good for modeling products but not for production systems. However, I needed a language that was suitable for experts from both product development and production planning. So an additional profile had to be developed anyway. And since UML2 is also an industry standard and offered the possibility to create a MBPE specific modeling language by profiling, the decision fell on it. Mm -hmm. But Chantal, again, let me ask you one last question about your modeling approach. I mean, coming back to Amira, Amira's product design team, they are already using for it. they are already using Acadia methodology and also the Capella tool. So I understood MVP needs a common design language for the product design and manufacturing planning. So how Amira and her team, how they can already use synergies out of this? Yeah, for this, um, we would need to adapt the UML-based modeling approach to the modeling artifacts used in Arcadia. So you can also represent the objects and relations used in our MBPE models. On the slide, you can see a quite simple initial mapping of Arcadia modeling artifacts to manufacturing concepts. This is maybe not perfect, but for first try, I think we will be able to model the most important aspects of our manufacturing system also aligned with the product line design to be manufactured. Okay, Chantal, I think it's enough with the theoretical input, but let me shortly summarize before we jump also right now into the practical part. So. I have asked myself three questions. So first of all, what is MBPE compared to MBSE? So I understood MBPE is an interdisciplinary approach for the early definition of manufacturing's conceptual system design in collaboration with product design. And it supports the collaboration through digital models that serves a multi-domain system architecture for the manufacturing system's digital threat. Then also, how can MBPE be realized initially with Capella, because Amira and her team, they're already using Capella. So I understood you can use the standard concepts of Arcadia method to also realize some of the most important aspects of the MBPE methodology. So however, to realize support the necessity of a multi-domain systems architecture for manufacturing systems, an enhancement like Arcadia for manuf manufacturing, let's call it like this, is necessary. And then also, what is the benefit of a combined MBSE and MBPE? So I understood if you really want to realize a holistic digital threat in the product, or better also in the full system lifecycle, you cannot stop modeling only products in the early stage, right? So you also need to use MBPE to reach a full digital twin for the manufacturing system and the decision pass traceability. That's what I understood. Is it correct, Chantal? That's correct. Okay. okay, but again, let me come back to my initial question. 
And let's return back to our mind game from the beginning. Amira, we want how we can achieve to solve the issues from Amira and Amira's team. They want to build a Lego Mindstorm factory for toy cars. Again, Amira is head of factory planning and her two expert teams, they have to fulfill the two following tasks. So the first one is the product design task. Develop a product line with at least three different toy car models based on standard Lego bricks. And the second one is the manufacturing planning task. So plan the corresponding fully automated manufacturing system with Lego Technic bricks and a minimum of Lego Mindstorm bricks for the manufacturing automation. But as already mentioned at the beginning, both teams, they are still working in silos. So Chantal, right now, I'm curious how to approach based on MBPE to, yeah, to solve this challenge for Amira and the team. Okay. I would propose to Amira to try something new and ask her teams to use integrated MBSE and MBPE to collaborate in a second try of the project. Okay, so after the first try, we are right now jumping into the second try based on an integrated MBSE and MBP approach. Then let's see what does this mean. Okay, we will you see now the first diagram that I have created. This is from the MBPE context and requirements level. And here both teams together have written an initial requirement specification for the overall project. It contains requirements, especially for product and manufacturing from both experts teams perspectives. The result is then uh, seen in the given diagram. It shows on the top the activities they have gone through and they have jointly made decisions for the overall system based on the LILAC requirements on the on the sites. They have mapped also their requirements to their common system model to reach an overall traceability. And here a very illustrative example can be found within the two encapsulated activities for defining the decoupling point for modularization and manufacturing and the platform concept for the product. These two aspects are so closely interdependent that neither domain is allowed to make a decision on them without collaboration with each other. As depicted in our diagram, the discussion had started with the question, what would be the restrictions to the product design caused by doing automation in a manufacturing system with Lego Mindstorms? Thereby, the teams have gone through several iterations and finally decided together that a manual pre-assembly for the toy car components should be considered as part of the manufacturing solution. All these steps and decisions have also been modeled by the two teams. And thanks to the modeling of the dependencies and the joint decisions, there is now also a common understanding of the consequences that a change to one of the named aspects would bring. In the lower half of the diagram, our two teams have then described the following development tasks. These were derived from their joint decisions and the necessary steps. Both teams have to accomplish these tasks to reach a first multi-domain system architecture for the toy car product line and the manufacturing system. Um, examples for such tasks are the developing of recurring platform parts on the product side or the planning of the general manufacturing functions for our manufacturing system. Okay, I see. So based on this, they have reached like a common understanding for their targets and the restrictions. And now they can start to create like the corresponding MBSE and MBPE models. Exactly. And we will stay now with the manufacturing planning team especially and see what they can accomplish using MBPE together with MBSE on the next levels. Okay. Corresponding to what I have explained for the technique and material flow level from MBPE method, our manufacturing planning team starts to describe the manufacturing functions in a solution neutral way. Therefore, they use the function objects and functional exchanges from Acadia system analysis. 
And there's a short note. The text box in the upper left corner shows a rough description of the platform concept. This one was jointly decided on by both teams in the first diagram. It will serve as one of the planning basics for this level's tasks and decisions. Our green functions in the diagram now show the solution neutral manufacturing functions. And similarly, the ex functional exchanges serve to describe exchanged material or information. What's really important here, the functions do not give any hint to the technical solution of the later manufacturing processes. They only describe what to accomplish, but not how yet. What we can see in the diagram is that the manufacturing team has diverted the main manufacturing flow on the left into separated assembly and transport yeah, functions. Yeah. Their main assembly functions are, for example, assemble chassis and back part, assemble chassis and front part, and the optional step, optional function for assemble roof to toy car. And for each of these main functions, there are some minor functions for material provision on the right side. Okay, but what is behind the different colors? These, these different colors come from the functional change from Arcadia, where we have heard about in the last presentation also. The purpose in this diagram is to represent interrelated process chains within large function diagrams, which together serve a unique unified purpose. And the blue one, for example, shows this main manufacturing flow where parts and assemblies are brought together to create the individual toy car models. The other four functional chains show the individual processes for material provision, which then come to the manufacturing flow. Okay. And what's right now next? If we step further on to the dimensioning and structure level, we get to this diagram as one example. Here we see that the solution neutral functions are grouped at the first step into logical entities. Later on, these logical entities will represent the resources um, with their designated purpose. To describe our groups, we use logical components. And if there is an exchange between these components or specific connections, then we use the component exchanges. Also here, we have a pink box in the upper left corner. And here you can see that the manufacturing system team wants to compare two different options for production principles. This diagram here, shows the one alternative of a production line with conveyors. The second variant is an island production with AGVs, but we will not look at this diagram today. What we can already see in the diagram is that we will, for example, need a central production planning and control system, which could later be specifically designed as, for example, as a control station. Also, the team decided to group the main transportation flow steps, so the functions we have seen before, into one logical entity called production line conveyor system. That means that this logical system incorporates all the main transport functions and that it will probably be a separate subsystem which needs its own microsite iteration later in the process. Okay, I think we have already like a first impression of how the solution might look like. But what's right now with the physical part? The physical part comes then with the technical solution level and brings us our physical architecture. The manufacturing planning team now transfers the logical components into physical resources with fixed technical solution principles. So nothing solution neutral anymore. In addition, first design alternatives for real layouts of the production system are created. For example, on the left side of the diagram, the team decided to present the logical component called storage with extraction system for chassis by a physical component they call stacked flow rack for chassis. And this one is combined with a pallet lift and a pallet slider to bring the chassis into the main manufacturing flow. On this technical solution level, also the subsystems are identified. For example, our pallet conveyor in the main manufacturing flow. Subsequently, 
it will have to go through its own four MBPE levels to be described in more detail afterwards. This way, the subsystem itself is specified in more detail and is elaborated to the extent that it can be decomposed again or passed to the expert design. Thereby, MBPE makes sure that this is aligned with the product line design. So, Susan, I hope you got my point. How we model decision paths and interdependencies between the work of our two expert groups in the one interdisciplinary team, for example, like seen on context and requirements level? Yeah, I think so. So I understood that this is really a crucial aspect of the MBSE approach. And only if we connect the product and manufacturing models, we are really able to benefit from this MBPE models. So therefore, let me also summarize what, what I understood in total. So model-based production engineering provides a clear methodology to create an integrated product manufacturing system model. It leads to a common engineering discussion. It handles the complexity and interdisciplinary collaboration. It helps by fast solution finding through automated traceability and impact analysis and it is based on open standard likes, like Arcadia Capella and UML and SysML. Anything else to add, Chantal? No, I think I've made my point. But if you want to have a deeper insight into the topic of MBPE, maybe I can help you out with additional literature from my researcher times. You can either have a look into my PhD thesis itself, for example, or you can look into my paper from Sub Annals about conceptual manufacturing system design based on early product information. I'm sure I will do this. So great. But that means, again, coming back from a theoretical perspective again to Amira and her team. So that means for Amira and her team, no more silos based on an integrated MBSE and MBPE approach. We have an aligned language between teams based on Arcadia and we have a faster process thanks to this kind of interdisciplinary digital twins. And that's basically what Amira makes happy and also their team. And therefore, thanks, Chantal, for all your input. Thanks for giving us your theoretical and also practical view on this topic. And right now, we are curious about the questions from our audience. Okay, just in time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, okay, we do have a few questions. Uh, okay, so first of them, uh, manufacturing-based system engineering or model-based manufacturing engineering, uh, what do the manufacturing or production engineers think about system engineering trying to take over their processes? Um, maybe let's start with the second part of the question, because I think um, this is maybe not the right way to phrase it. Um, the system engineers won't take over the processes of the people doing manufacturing and production development. They just get another idea about the methodology, uh, about working with their methods, but connected to what product design is doing. If you talk to manufacturing engineers, they are often complaining that the people from design do not ask of their opinion about the design because they are so focused on what could be the right product that they forget that this product has to be manufactured afterwards. And this, this MBPE tries to give both experts a way to talk to each other as early as possible and to go by a, a similar methodology so that they can understand each other a bit, a bit better than before. So they won't take over the processes of the manufacturing team. Okay, thanks for that. Oh, next question. Um, how do you handle the manufacturing process depending on sites, uh, production from different resources, or model and model for each site? I think that depends a little bit on um, your, your, your manufacturing system. If we think about more than one site, so we have a production network, um, we will have different models, at least for each site, which we have then afterwards to take as replicas and recreations into an overall model with a 
bigger system boundary and then look at the interdependencies between these sites so that we understand where we have redundancies and if there is something in the production site that can only be done by this side and not by the other one. So we also will stick to this system of system decomposition approach to understand exactly these process dependencies. Okay. Yeah, next one. So does the model is supposed to be using a full serial production rate? And if so, does the links should be connected to any ERP or EMES tools? Yeah, in, the, in the first hand, um, the idea of model-based production engineering is located in the early stage of the engineering cycle. So we want to establish collaboration between these different experts and then get to a model that makes it easier to understand how a product is related to its manufacturing and how a manufacturing decision um, depends on what is done in design. You can think this further, that's right, and maybe also in a, in a further research step try to link these models into this detailed world of ERP and MES, but right now this is not the plan of the existing concept. Could be a presentation for next year. Yeah, right. Good, good idea. <laughs> okay, next one. Well, uh, a long question. Uh, would you find it useful? Uh, would, oh, sorry, would you find it a useful approach to extend MBC and MBPE to some kind of model based logistic system planning in order to efficiently collect supplier for post delivery? Uh, would this systematically and trustably extend the comprehensive corporate digital twin ecosystem. Yeah, that, that's uh, good. The, the question goes a little bit in the same direction like the one with the ERP system, but focusing on um, networks of, of, of tiers. Um, I think that's also the question on how to collaborate with, with our um, tiers to, to different uh, companies today and in the future. Um, some of the classical MBSE approaches already deal with the question how you could use a subsystem from your product and give it to the, the, to the tier and to elaborate then this component of the product on its own with the perspective to bring back this elaborated model to the overall system model. This could also work with manufacturing, but I don't know if this is so much important because the manufacturing processes at a logistics partner are not so strongly interdependent to the logistics, to the, the manufacturing processes at the OEM. Maybe I have to rephrase it a little bit, but I, I don't mean that the logistics in between both partners are not important. The, I mean the processes on, on creating the parts and the components itself. The logistics itself, how people from the OEM and the tiers are working together could also be um, a way at looking at a broader system boundary and give you another perspective on, on model-based production engineering. But I also think that this is something that would need further elaboration in the future. Yep. Um, and our last question, not, not because we are uh, in lack of time, but this is really the last we received. So, well, we still have time for questions, if you ever. Okay, so Chantal, can you uh, please type the titles of your research documents? Uh, yes, we, I think we can do this, but I would um, I would recommend to do something which is much easier. Just go on sc Google Scholar and search for my name then you will find all the publications with their names and also with links to go there. And if that's not enough, uh, you can also look at the research gate. Most of the documents can be downloaded from there. Otherwise, you can also send an invite to Chantal via LinkedIn and then she will send you the information. Of course. <laughs> okay, so well, we still have time for last question if any you just check oh, i think i think we are we are good okay so thanks thanks for your presentation and for your time and well i hope to see you next year <laughs>
<laughs> it was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great evening. Have a great evening. Thank you, you too. Bye.